Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Wave. I just wait. Just wait a bit. I've noticed that some people at the start of their live Instagram feeds are very quiet for about a minute. And they just sit there like this. Manu Ma, hey Ed. Hi, Loza. Lauren. Rebecca. Charlie. Jack to Aberdeen. Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> um, wow. How are you all? I'm just going to just see who's joining. Normally, I kind of start talking immediately, but it's good to see familiar names at this very unfamiliar time, right? Lots of waves how was your daughter's birthday una's birthday considering it was just the four of us i think she had a really good time it was lovely thank you for asking it's really important at this time especially with the kids like she's got a birthday sal's got a birthday coming and normally it's all about friends obviously isn't it so it's really important in our lockdown to celebrate it and you know, make the most of it. And I think we did that. We, we played some games, which is always good. No family arguments. <laughs> um, <clears throat> South East London, how are you? From North West London. Uh, you're that way, I'm that way. It's your mum's birthday. Hi, your mum. Happy birthday. How's Ziggy? Ziggy's very muddy at the moment. Oh. Coming in from walks, she's just filthy. She's a filthy, filthy dog. <laughs> okay. Um, hola, Mexico, Madrid. Hi, everybody. You have to find positives at these times like these, hey? Yep, you certainly do. Um, you really, really do. Um, I want to say, first of all, for all of you out there who are, any of you who are Key workers, frontline workers, health workers, all people who keep our countries running and our health systems going and are doing these selfless jobs and selfless tasks. Big love, big thank you. Also to everybody who might be looking after an elderly relative or looking after someone or is worried about someone in their family that's got the virus. I send you my love. Well done. And I send also to all the, all the mums who usually, and I'm a father and I think we have quite, quite, a, quite an equitable division of labour in our household, but the mother is almost certainly, your mum, the mother is almost certainly the one who the family orbit around. So this is for the mums. Alvin, my drummer, has a great t-shirt. <laughs> it says... I love hot mums on it. <laughs> we all love hot mums. We love non-hot mums. We love mums. And to all the dads and also to all the kids. who It's a really hard time for them. So I thought I just wanted to say that. Um, I'm going to pull somebody in in a moment. But uh, just how's the week been? Up and down. I think like everybody. I feel pretty lost today. Uh, it has to be said. Although... Whenever I seem to tune in or plug into this, it always sort of brings a smile to my face. But I've definitely have been a bit lost today, as I'm sure a lot of you are. Um, here in London, here in Britain, it's midwinter. It's, it's cold. It's very wet. It's dark. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, this time of the year anyway is pretty difficult, isn't it? But with what's going on and all the stuff and... I've been trying to do some music, um, trying to make some new sounds. Not a great day. I thought I had something, but I think it's about the energy. I just don't have the energy at the moment. <laughs> Loving the hair. Thank you, Leon. I'm getting used to if my hair's a little bit, you know, not having had long hair for a very long time, I forget that unless you wash it regularly, it can look a bit of a mess. So it looks a bit of a mess, but that's why I've tied it back. But I'm sure many of you know that. And I've known it for a long time. It's new for me. 
or it's newish. I haven't had long hair since about 1990. All right, let's pull some friends in. Let's pull in somebody who we've had before. I wonder if I really fancy connecting with Leon. Leon, if you're there and the guys. Um, let's see. I just, I feel like I want to find out what's going on down in Kentucky. I, it's not favoritism, I can assure you, but I just felt like, Leon, are you going to, you going to ask to come on in? Are you there? Let's find out what's going on. I need some, maybe you're not there. Maybe you want to join us later or something. Alrighty, alrighty, righty, 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 righty. Somebody, who was it last week? Somebody last week wanted to join. Okay, let's see. Here we go. Yeah, I got Leon. I just want to, I want to bring Leon in. Leon and the guys. <clears throat> Waiting. Wait. Leon, hey, my brother. Hey, my brother. I, I, how, how are you? I'm doing fabulous. How are you? Yeah, all right. I'm loving the hat. Oh, thank you. My uh, one of my best friends ever made this hat. Really made it? Yeah, he's super. I'll get you one. He's super talented. He's a DJ, an artist, wow. knit stuff. He's awesome. I'll get you That's one. Beautiful, amazing colors, and the way that the colors are sort of like yeah he's done it it's amazing my mum's a big my mum's very good at all that stuff at crafty stuff knitting and stuff so i grew up with i love the old handmade stuff yeah i mean i'm into it too I wear, i'm wearing all black but i just happen to have this hat on i'll wear with everything yeah it's <laughs> i it's a good i think it's a good look all black with a bit of color on top yeah how um how are you how are you doing all right i'm, I'm, I'm to be honest with you i'm struggling a bit today yeah, you but... know, I, I, fi I, I'm, I find like, you know, I started off the day great. My cold showers are working wonders. You know? Okay, I've been doing that too. Have, you, been, with ha you. have, have you been? Have you found it? The yoga and the cold shower combination yeah. is undefeated. It's amazing, isn't it? Uh, incredible. Really? Yeah. Have you really found that? I promise, yeah. Yeah, I got it's my amazing. Whole routine. I got a routine. Yeah. I'm, up. I'm up with the sunrise every morning, 5 a.m., well, Wow. I run the bridge. I, I see the sunrise. I hit the gym. Then I do my yoga, my prayer, my meditation. And then after that, I take my cold shower and um, I get it going. <laughs> wow. I love <laughs> I get that. It going. Good yeah, it's good job, business. Man. And I you do, it so you get up at five every morning? Every morning. And last night I went to bed at 1230. So I'm kind of not in the best energy right now. You're I, was up, I was up late. You're looking good for it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You're looking good. Wow. I mean, you are inspiring. I mean, I wish I, I kind of, I've, I've, I've been going through kind of some health stuff recently. So I, I've had, I, I just set my alarm for seven o'clock and the alarm goes off and I think I'm going to get up before everyone gets up and I'm going to, I'm going to do the breathing, meditate and go for a run then. And every morning I just like, go, oh, I can't get up. It's like one of those things, but I need to, you, you just actually inspired me. Well, let's do it. That's what we're here for. To yeah. inspire one another. Yeah. I can't tell you how much you've inspired me, how you wouldn't believe it. You probably would believe it. but no, I'm, Of course not. I, don't, I, I can't even inspire my kids. <laughs> oh, Lord. They're, bi they're biased. They're, oh, they're man. Biased. <laughs> yeah. So how are you? You're looking, you're looking how, how's it all going for you? How's, how's the new year? Because it's obviously a huge moment in your history uh, yeah how's how are you feeling i'm uh i'm productive i'm productive i'm driven i'm in i'm inspired i'm feeling lots of emotions uh pain and pleasure alike but i'm embracing them all not letting my dark moments break me down and not letting my brighter moments define me i'm just finding a way to find the balance and just stay you know at ease within all of it i think i don't know how you found it but i think a lot of this time as well it it, it tests our patience like patience is i don't know about it, but patience feels like such an important uh trait emotion or whatever you call it whatever it is what is patience it's a strength a superpower a superpower 
Do you, I it mean, you superpower. Do you have? Do you have? You strike me as somebody who's pretty, pretty patient. You've got, yeah. Yeah, I mean, patience is um, honestly my ability, my ability to be taught, and my patience. I think are my only talents. No, I think you're putting yourself yeah. down. I think you've got many talents, <laughs> but you can say that that's right up at up at the a super talent, a super. Power. Yeah, I think that all the talents that I've acquired though have came from my ability to be taught. And my patience. Right. Yeah. You know, like I, I didn't start playing guitar at all until I was 27, 26 years old. Yeah. And that, like learning an instrument at such an old age, not it's super not old. old, but in the <laughs> instrument world, it's kind of old. When did you start playing guitar? Uh, I start when I was 15. And I, I thought I was old then. I remember yeah. there was the schools that I went to when I was here. So my first love as an instrument was actually the trumpet. And I love, when I was a kid, we used to get these old black and white films on in Britain, because like in the 70s. And there were two films, and one's not black and white, but two films. And one of them was the Glenn Miller story with Jimmy Stewart. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and he, I think he played a cornet or whatever. Well, no, he played a trombone. But the other one, the big thing was seeing Louis, Louis Armstrong in High Society. Have you ever seen that film? High society. I have so it's, it's, it's Bing Crosby, uh, I think Frank Sinatra, Gene Kelly, and Louis Armstrong. Louis Do Armstrong. I need to watch it? Man, there's a scene, just check it out on YouTube. There's a scene where Louis Armstrong and uh, Bing Crosby do a song together with, with, with Louis Armstrong's band. And it's, and, and it's called Jazz, that's Jazz. And I've got spine tingle now thinking about it. And it, it was, I mean, Satchmo was the greatest, right? And so that's why I, I, I wanted to learn trumpet. I wanted to learn trumpet. And then I remember I went to my next school when I was 13 and I'd been playing trumpet for about four years and I loved it. And I had a really bad teacher. And there, were, there weren't many trombones in the, there were a lot of trumpet players, but there weren't a lot of trombone players for the school orchestra. So what he said to me, he said to me, he said, he said, um, listen, uh, listen, O'Brien, because you got called by your surname. Listen, O'Brien, I think uh, your future's on the trombone. I was like, I was like, oh, really? Oh, why? And he said, your lips are too big for the trumpet. And so I was absolutely gutted because I, I was like, oh, shit. And I internalized it like we all did. We didn't go back home and tell our parents. And about six weeks and so he put me onto the trombone and i hated the trombone it, was, it wasn't cool the trumpet was nim nimble and little and it was yeah you do all the trombone like oh it's all that going on although i think it's a really cool instrument now of course but i wasn't into it at the time and after about six seven weeks i went i i said mum i'm giving up brass and she said what i thought you loved the trumpet i said no i said my teachers told me my lips are too big and she went what she, and she was she says like well, what about Dizzy Gillespie? What about, what about Satchmo's lips? They weren't, he didn't, they didn't have small lips. You know, they had yeah. good size. That, and and uh, by then I'd lost it. So yeah, I, mine was the trumpet and then the guitar was about 15. But here's the thing. I, I think that's a re we've got this really weird thing in our society about you having to start things at a young age. And if you haven't done something when you're young, you're never going to be any good at it. Do you know what I mean? Yes, and that is definitely a a, mis, a a misconception. That's not the truth. It's not the truth. And it, you can take up something at any age. I really believe that. I mean, you know, you can be running, you can be doing weights when you're, four, when you're 80, you know? You can. Like, you can, do, you can do, you see all these people who do this stuff. Yeah, it was an older guy in the gym the other morning, and I was, I was lifting weights, and he was like, man, I wish I was still as strong as you. Yeah. And I told him, I'm like, man, you're stronger than me because you're, you're gray and you're in here. Yeah. You're in here at five in the morning. You know, the <laughs> rest of the older people are getting the rest. They're sleeping and you're in here. You're stronger than me. I want to be like you when I'm 80. You don't need to yeah. really worry about being like me. Yeah. I want to be doing what you're doing, you know, when I'm 75 and 76 years old. Totally. But you're right. And it I, takes bravery, you know. Yeah, bravery. And also not to, there are so many, I always remember that thing, like you haven't reached it yet because you're not 40 yet, but there was a saying over here, life, life is downhill after, you're, after you hit 40. 
what a load of nonsense. And the inference being that you, you know, you, you, you know, you sort of start uh, losing, you know, your faculties or you're losing your strength, all this stuff. It's absolute nonsense. But you have to be really, you know this, you have to be really careful about the things that you, that things that are said to you because they can be, and the things and the words that you say, because they can be please, prophecies if you're not careful. Words are so yeah. important, aren't they? You really have to, um, I think you just have to try harder to control, control your environment and your surroundings. You know, like, even from the things you allow, the music you listen to, the yeah. movies you watch, the people you follow online, you want all of those things to be conducive to the person you want to be. Yeah. The end goal. Yeah. The person that you want to die as. You want everything that you take in to be conducive to that. And there are yeah. some things, of course, that are out of our control. You know, except like maybe like your work environment or something of that sort. But, you know, you need to follow things and inspire you. The people that you talk to, your friends, they need to inspire you and encourage you. And we have a lot of say-so in that. And yeah. some people, you know, disregard that power. You control your surroundings. You know, you got to control what you take in. Yep. What you take in ultimately will dictate what you choose and what totally. you dream and what you become, what you breathe, you know? You've got to be a great gatekeeper. I've, I realized that on my journey, when I started my journey, the kind of, I guess it was 20 odd years ago, kind of the, the getting better, getting, getting alive, getting vital, getting changing the situation. And I realized you have to be a good gatekeeper and everything. It's the people around you, the right people. How many times have you, that people find this, that, when you embark upon changing your life and changing because you might be in a rut and you're, you're not happy, what often happens is it's a process of, of, of realizing actually sometimes there are people around you who are not good for you, you know, and they can, some of the, sometimes they can actually be in your family as well, you know, and yeah. I'm, not, I'm not speaking from experience here, but I know people who've had, I can see who people have felt guilty because, you know, for instance, their dad might have been hard on them and continued to be hard on them. And, and, and sometimes you, you, you need distance from these things. And being a great gatekeeper also means not only the people around you, but the things that you see, the things that I'm really, really, really sensitive to films I watch, stuff that I watch, um, stuff that I read. I'm really, really sensitive. And I, that doesn't mean I, 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 you know, I only read beautiful stuff. I don't, but I'm really aware of. There's a time and a place though. Yeah. It's yeah. not necessarily a good thing last thing at night to read the news. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, you... it's so true. Like sometimes like, you know, I love Joy Division. I love, <laughs> the, I love The Cure. You know, I love like old Nine Inch Nails, Trent Reznor <laughs> stuff, but like if I'm in a dark, spiral and yeah. downward spiral myself yeah. I can't listen to it it's wild that I have to be happy yeah. to be able to listen to them because if not like I'll plummet yeah. you know? but if I'm like sad I can listen you know to bright stuff and lift myself up Yeah. So there's, yeah. there's a time and a place for sure you have to be conscious of what of what you take in you can only put out what you take in yeah. you can't just right. put out some magic sauce that, that you never absorb yeah. You absorb something and it goes out. So if you're bringing in negative energy and you can't control it and manipulate it the way you want to, yeah. then you're going to be putting negative energy out. You got to have that balance. Are you, are you, uh, it's interesting. So you're, you're very enlightened like this. I, do you find a lot of your friends, I mean, uh, do you find your, your, the band, the rest of the guys, are these all things that you and your friends and, you know, are, are, are talking about? Is this stuff that resonates and, and is, you know, yeah, we have convers we have conversations pretty often. I mean, we're all from totally separate walks of life. But the thing is there are only so many human emotions. So regardless of what you come from, at some point in time, we will all feel each other's pain. We will all feel one another's emotions. Yeah. Um, and my my bandmates, my brothers are just I mean, they're they're beautiful. You know, like I'm on a forward trajectory right now, but when I met them I was a lot darker than I am today. And I learned, you know, so much from each of my band members. You know, they helped my sense of humor and they, I learned patience and I learned humility and 
I learned a lot of things from from my band. So we don't like necessarily, you know, have like super like in depth talks about our spirituality and our faith, but they all live inspiring lifestyles and they've inspired me tremendously. Um, how long so yeah, have you the, got? How long? How long? So how long ago was it that you met them? When did you meet up with them? So in 2010, my big brother, my best friend, um, was killed and he was murdered and left in our front yard at my grandmother's house. And my entire band's from Lexington. It's about an hour from Louisville. When that happened, I left Louisville because, you know, we, we were in the streets and like that was my wake up call. Yo, you got to get out of here. You got to figure something out or, wow. or that'll happen to you. You know, like you got to figure it out. And I always wanted to be a musician, but I didn't have any music friends around here, really. I knew there was a scene in Lexington, so I grabbed my backpack. I had a couple hundred dollars, and um, I went up there. And those, my brothers, are who the universe blessed me with. And that was um, 11 years ago now. Wow. So, yeah, and, and that time, you know, we did rap music and R&B music, and we've explored everything you can explore, but... Yeah, those are the people that the universe blessed me with for me to finally take my abilities, you know, serious. And yeah, I'm forever indebted to them. You've got such an amazing, I mean, I can't even begin to imagine what you must must have gone through losing your brother and being in that situation. But Leon, I've got it. like, I mean, I'm sure everybody's watching this is like, you've got an unbelievable character you are you are like a light and this is like you are you're you're you are so inspiring honestly what you've what you've been through but where you are now and where you're going it's so inspiring because so many people would have been utterly crushed by your by by what some of your by a lot of your experiences and to be where you are to be talking like you are is like man you are you no know, you inspire me, really, honestly. Amazing, 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 yes. amazing. It's so, um, it's so mutual, you know. And the funny thing is, like, of course, we've never shook hands or been in the same space, but you, you wouldn't believe, you know, like, we don't have anything, and you're, you know, walking on the road, side of the road, and it's raining, and a truck rides past and splashes water all on you, and you got, you got there, there playing in your headphones, or you're listening to weird fishes, and it's like. <laughs> that's a thing you know like you yeah. all have really really contributed to my spiritual growth you know so without me like you know knowing you like directly you don't know how big of an inspiration you are it's it's all mutual if well you I'm know an inspiration it's... you're an inspiration as well you know we gotta keep it's it's reciprocal all the yeah and is. and people out all the people out there as well like holding the light i mean you know it's funny like when you make music and you know this that you don't realize you don't quite understand how the music touches people's lives because what you do is you you make it and you make it and it touches you you know you you, you you're into it but then you never like you're talking about like it's like a film like you just said like walking along the yes. side of the road and you know it's there's um yeah it is mutual it is and it's i think that's it's so reciprocal it's yeah just so, but isn't but this, this and this is amazing about for all the negativity about the internet there was there's been a whole thing on uh bowie uh, over here understandably because it was the it was his birthday, birthday and then the, the fifth fifth anniversary of his death on sunday i think and there's they keep on playing this this one um this bowie speaking talking about the internet and talking about it 15 20 years ago and he said we have no idea how revolutionary you probably heard that one. Yeah, revolutionary heard, yeah. it for the good and for the bad. And obviously, you know, we're 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 living out the bad in many ways. But the good things about like what we're doing here now and what we do when we now, you know, musicians and our, musicians and 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 their audience never had this. We've never had this this apart from being amongst you know when you're gigging. And I've always loved that talking to going to the gates or going outside the venue and chatting with people who come to the show. But this is, this is, this is revolutionary. This is like, it's so much more powerful. Oh and yeah, this makes a difference. It a makes a huge difference. difference. And the connections that we have and the connections that we're making. 
And, you know, we don't know where we're going. We don't know what's happening. But I, I, I it's like, I, I, you know, we're, we're, I, yeah, we're, this is, this is all part of the change. This is all the stuff yeah. that's happening. And that's one of the things, um, I don't want you to, um, I don't want to talk out of term, but I've, I've been watching this and following you on here since you've been on IG, honestly. And you have a light. You have a glow in your eye, and it's contagious, and it's it's beautiful, you know. And um, maybe it was last week or one of the weeks, and I looked at you. I'm like, man, Ed's, Ed's glow in his eye. It's kind of <laughs> dark today, man. Like, my bro's not feeling it. So I wanted to just tell you, man, thank you so oh. much for what you're doing because I know that I know it's only realistic. Yeah. There are Thursdays, yeah. you don't want to do this. And you come here and you give us so much. Uh, and I want you to, if no one else knows, man, no one else tells you, I appreciate it. Your community uh, loves you so much. A lot of your fans like follow me and we talk and you're not mentioning all the conversations. I mean, you're mentioned, but you're not like added in them. But we're talking about, you know, how beautiful you are and how you nurture your community and how much you mean to this community. So I always know on those days that you don't want to do this or you're tired. Like we love you, we appreciate you. Oh man, thank it means you. The that world to us, you know. You're thank doing you. really good stuff. This is really, really good stuff. Thank you. You know, today it's for, oh, well. Thank you for saying that. I'm like, you know, I do it because it's, um, you know, I love you guys, and I'm not just saying that. I feel this great love about this community and this tribe and. You know, I've always felt that. I've always felt that with the Radiohead audience. I don't know if people who've come and seen us live could tell, but, you know, I'm always, it's so my obvious. heart, my heart is out there. I want to, I've always kind of felt uncomfortable. I want to be in the audience playing. That's why I like to be dancing with everybody in the audience whilst playing. That's, but um, it's funny, like today, it's not, I, there aren't days when I never want to do this. There, like today, I was feeling, re I felt really lost today. I just, you know what it's like these days we get. And I was t talking to Susan and we, I was saying, you know, I said, it's, I think it's all about patience. And, um, but yeah, it's important. I think it's, it's like, you, you have to check in with people even when you don't feel happy. And I think that's what's strong about this and that we have to, you know, I, I mean, I know it's kind of one-sided. I wish it was, you know, I could get more, more people in and we could have more of a, but I feel it's, especially at this time, there's, it, it feels like the, the, the ritual of checking in is yeah. important. It's like, it's like you getting up at five in the morning. It's like hitting the gym. It's like turning up to your yoga mat and there's doing your mornings, yoga. There's mornings I don't want to do it. But I know <laughs> that the little 600 followers that I have on my personal page, yeah. they're, they're waiting for me to get up. They're do you waiting do it? for me to show them that I'm in the gym. They're waiting for me to show them that I'm practicing. So do you I do can't it? stop. <laughs> do, you do, do you do it every morning? Every morning. Wow. So you don't like have Sunday off. You don't go like have a day of rest. There's nothing off. Wow. I mean, we come from nothing. Yeah. If I ever want to be able to embrace and impact the world the way that, that Ed does, I can't take Sundays off. You can take a Sunday off maybe because you've earned, <laughs> you've earned your Sunday off. I haven't earned mine yet, so I'm up. <laughs> well, I I would say to you, and it, it was, I would say to you, I would say, you're you're right, you're you're wrong in one way. You have earned it, but you you can also be easy. You can also have a quiet day, and quiet. And my experience, you probably probably don't, I probably need a quiet day, but um, I find quiet days often they're they're the days also when you you know, for instance, if you aren't pounding, you aren't doing the gym you have like a day of rest and your body can just assimilate. Do you know what I mean? There's a, they, they, I do, they, I, I want them. I just, I don't know you, how to do it. Okay. I need to, you're a hundred percent correct. Like, are, I, you, I are you, it. are you a little bit addicted to the endorphin rush then? I am addicted to getting better at things. Okay, cool. I'm addicted to getting better at things. And I just, I love, being able to inspire and motivate others yeah and that's really just that's kind of what matters most to me yeah at the end of the day like you know like i want to get better and i want to contribute to other people getting better yeah so by any means you know sometimes it's 
maybe counterproductive to my, my body. And sometimes it may put me in a bad mood, but I promise you will never know. You will never see it. They'll never see it. <laughs> because that's just what it's about. That's, that's, what, I, that's what I want to do. Well done. Well done, sir. Really well done. Very, I mean, it, it's, all, you know, it's always so good to connect with you. It's always so good. And, and you know, this next week, um, be safe. You know, we hear that it's, there's, a, Sal was saying there are more troops in what, D.C., at yeah, the moment than there America's are in tough. It's so than tough. there are in Afghanistan and Iraq at the moment. Yeah, it's America's it's it's really it's really tough to be uh to be an American right now. To be an American that has a that has a genuine soul, a heart. Yeah. All the lovers, all the lovers in our country right now are hurt. Yeah. Everyone's so hurt, it's it's tough. I haven't been able to be online as often as I typically am. I'm trying to, like we talked about before, not take as much in. But yeah, it's tough and I'm going to do the best I can to protect my energy. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to look for positives in the thing and I guess that the positive, you know, I always say this about America because I, you know, I've obviously got huge ties with America and I love, my grandmother was an American. I've got American family and I love them. And so I feel a very, but I have a slight objectivity and I always feel like America is, is always just a place of extremes. It always has been and it's, you know, as well, it's a young country. I think, you know, that, and there's been, like we've spoken about before on this, there's, the, there's a myth about America. America has its idea of itself. And it's really, it's a white male idea of itself. It's not, it's not the whole thing, you know what I mean? Um, and so it's been founded on, it's an amazing country. I mean, it was founded off, you know, some of the principles of running away from Europe. But some of the principles that it founded on are need to be addressed. And that's what's happening now. And obviously, racism, you know, the divisions. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, I, I, what did I read? I read something by Sean Penn. I always think Sean Penn's quite interesting. And he said, I've never felt more hopeful than now. Because in a way, you know, maybe three, four years ago, he's, he, he, and he, t he refers not specifically to what's been going on with, with Trump and everything, but he talked about the Black Lives Matter movement. And he said, now we can really, really address this. And, you know, obviously there are more wounds in America. But you kind of have to, in life, you have to open those wounds up. And it's, so, it's the most painful thing in order to heal. And it might take a while, but um, this is stuff that has to happen. And it's, totally. I think, I think you, you guys are at the hardest point, the lowest ebb at the moment. And, um, yeah. you know. It's always I'd, darkest before dawn, you're correct. Absolutely. And I just, I, I just got to say, and I'm sure there were people out here, and I, I, I'm sure I'll offend family. No, most of my, I, I think there's something fundamentally wrong with a country when it has the right to bear arms for its citizens. And they executed, a, uh, is it in Indiana two days ago, a woman? Yes, yes. The woman and, that killed the woman for the baby. And she obviously did a, a terrible crime, but she was mentally, she'd been, she was, she was, she was, she was, she was, uh, she, she was massively right suffering from you. mental health problems. That's so, tough. you know, I think America's, oh, what am I trying to say here? I'm, I'm being really, I'm, I'm not being very eloquent about this. I just think, I also think that America's an incredible place and some of the greatest people I know are Americans and people like yourself who embrace the new, embrace new ideas, you know, who are open-hearted and welcoming. I always say this about America as well, that wherever you go, people, and I found this as, I found this as, a, as a British person, everybody, whether you're in, a, you're in an inner city neighborhood or you're even down south, for me, it's different because I'm white and I'm male, I'm British, but there is, there is a goodness to a lot of people as well in America. And I really, really believe that. And there's an openness and a hospitality that we maybe don't have here in Britain. So um, 
I'm, I'm being really, I realize I'm kind of thinking out loud, so I'm sorry if I've offended anybody. And I'm, no, I don't, I'm a, I, I don't think so. I think what you said was, was fine. I'm just, I don't have a, I don't have a script here or anything. And I'm, 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 I would never want you to have a script. We're, we're too real for that. You're too real for that. I'll never have a script. <laughs> Can't you tell? Not an actor. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Clumsy, clumsy with my words sometimes, but yeah. I hope that made kind of sense. But um, we're gonna make we're gonna make the most of it. But you're right; these things that are happening, they need it to happen. Yeah. These parties and people that are being exposed, they need it to be exposed. The pain that is being felt, it it needs to be felt. Maybe that's the pain that's gonna ignite the spark for change. Yeah. And it may have to happen over and over, but eventually it'll click. It'll happen. A, a change, a change will come. But even with us knowing that it needs to be, it needs to happen. That doesn't make it any easier to deal with. So any of my fans, I said fans, friends, family, yeah. lovers, everyone out there, just like in these tough times, like just try to protect your energy. Yeah, you can you can be aware, but don't let what's going on around you dictate your decisions. Don't let these things bring you down. Yeah. Stay productive. Stay focused. Continue to love. When we fight, we fight out of love. Yeah. We don't fight someone because we hate them. We fight them because we need to show them a difference. Yeah. We need to show them love. That's the way that we win the war. Can't and, fight fire with fire. Yeah. Can't fight fire with water. And you remember all those people who make all the noise? They are, a, they are a small minority, the ones who actually take it to that extent. And that's not, you know, those people, even those people on the Capitol, you know, last week, they do not represent all of Trump's supporters. You know, you know, we have to remember that as well. You know, 100%. they are, you know, there are, there are good people who are Trump supporters who just, you know, get, don't get it. But that, you know, but um, I, I, I always think that's really important. It's the ones who make the noise, the most noise. And usually, let's face it, it's men, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, you know, the, lo the loudest in the room is probably the, the one that's going to do the 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 least damage on the on a grand scale yeah they're usually, I, they're usually the, the softest yeah yeah that's yeah. how that goes so i think i think we'll be all right the power is okay. in the people the power is the power we have the numbers you have as the numbers as, we, as long as we don't let them corrupt us as long yeah. as we don't let their their antics fill us with hate yeah we can we can make a difference yeah man beautiful words beautiful yeah. words my brother it's so so good hearing you seeing you know seeing you today hearing from you, I was I was I I was I was looking in your eyes last week and I'm just like man Ed's just it's not my bro right there something's no. going on. And I, listen, I know as well. I'm, I'm we are really lucky. We don't have to like the there's our our hospitals over here are, are overloaded. I mean, watching some of the news and and the staff, the nurses having to make decisions about you know who's going to get what life-saving equipment it's um, and they're so young and so you know i'm fine i'm just like i think like all of us we have good days and we have it, it's it's an energy we all i mean well, i'm not on the front line but you you feel the energy in the city in london you really feel it. it's very different from being in the country so it's like any city it's like yeah. we can feel you can feel the wave the the, the energy of everybody so yeah, yeah. I mean, you, all had, you, had, you all had lots of stuff going on too. Those kids that ended up getting, well, they're like being caged on their campus. Yeah. It's, it's like there's wars and battles being fought everywhere right now. Yeah. You know, there's so much going on. And sometimes I, I feel like I know that we're going through a lot, but I don't, I feel like we're taken away from a lot of horrible things happening around the world. You know, like those mass concentration camps they're building in China. Yeah, the, the the crisis with the Yemeni in Yemen. Yeah. There's so many people that are doing way, way, way worse and suffering way worse than we are, and that's also something that we have to be mindful of. You know, here in America, it's like yes, we're doing bad, but if we stay together and we keep the love in our hearts, these things will change. But there are other countries, other situations that are a lot, a lot worse off than us. So we're you, still gonna fight for and make that change. But I don't. I hate when America always takes the spotlight mm. we got some political stuff going on but there's kids that aren't eating and starving and you can see the ribs showing in these other countries and that's way more important to yeah. me than anything happening happening on capitol hill 
You yeah. know, that stuff is important, but I don't want people to always take a Give America the spotlight. And I don't want you all to feel so much sympathy and stuff, you know, for us. We need to feel more sympathy collectively for <laughs> these kids that aren't eating. You know, well, I'm, in, I'm I, I, do you know what I'm so impressed about, <laughs> about your knowledge of international news and what's going on? Because, you know, one of the things that's always struck me that when you go to America, the news is very, there's very little world affairs. I went to, I, I went with my cousin aged 18. I was aged 18. I went to high school for the day in America, down in Texas. And uh, no, 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 no. It was when I was 14. It wasn't my cousin, it was a friend. And I went with a 16 year old. And, um, I went for the day just to see what high, because I thought high school would be like Greece, you know, like in the movie, like Greece. And it was quite like that, actually. Um, <laughs> compared, to, to, compared to the kind of school that I went to, I, I mean, I went to an all boys school, which was terrible. And I was, I was in this school and they were like, oh my God, there are these, all these beautiful girls and stuff. Anyway, and I always remember the geography lesson. And, um, and I think the geography teacher said, it, well, who knows, who knows where Cairo is? And I'm like going, the teacher's taking the piss, right? I mean, everyone knows where Cairo is. Yeah. <laughs> it took about it's four fast. attempts, four different people. Some was like down in Argentina. So c congratulate. And you're right, you know, and we're right in our, it's right what you're saying, because, you know, it's not just America-centric news, it's Western news. And you're, what's been going on in Syria the last four or five years, what's been going on in the Middle East, what, you know, what's been going on in, in, um, in, in Uganda, What's, I was yes. hearing about Uganda this morning. There's so much going on. And there also has been so much going on in other countries in the last 60, 70 years because of Western democracies interfering, all this stuff, backing various Definitely. leaders, you know, trying to sell arms, all this stuff. And, you know, we, we've sort of dumped our problems on the third world in inverted commas. And, different, and, and now maybe the chickens are coming home to roost for us all. You know? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's so much, so much going on. It's very true. Like the news here is, is, Western centered is actually a, um, a polite term. It's very yeah. Western, curated, and they're creating, yeah. they're creating narratives in a lot of sense. For like a lot of the stuff's not even. That's a whole conspiracy. Of course, I don't want to get into conspiracies. But a lot of this stuff is what they want it to be. Yeah. So like, Actually, our news is the news that I look at the least. Yeah. Because I, I live here and I live, I live our news. Yeah. I don't need to watch the news. I need to watch the world news. Yeah. Because I know what's going on here. Like, regardless of what they say on the TV, I can feel it. I can feel the energy. I walk down the street and I can feel what's happening. And a lot of the news is hogwash. <laughs> like, so where do, you get, where do you get your world news? I mean, I have like... 12 or 13 news things that I follow. And it's, I got CNN Africa, I got BBC, I have World Economic Forum. Yeah. I have World BuzzFeed. I have wow. Middle Eastern Eye. There's so many, I just follow so many things. I want to know what's, I want to know what's going on. I want to send these people. I want to be able to, to pray for them. I want to be able to keep them in mind and keep them in spirit. You know, because the universe hears us all. It hears all of our cries, all of our prayers. So if I know what's going on, I can send them my love. It's not sending them a blank check, but I can send them my love and, you know, hope for some change there. And I don't want to just focus all my energy just on my own, my own, you know, downfalls yeah. or my own struggles. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't really, I don't pay a lot of attention to the news here. I know what's going on because I'm living in it. Yeah. But I don't even, I don't trust these news people. I don't, I don't, I'm not into them. Yeah. I think that's very wise, sir. Yeah, not, not yeah. into them, so. Yeah. Listen, my brother, I'm going to love you and leave you. So good to I connect with you. It. Yeah. Yes, it's been, um, been a blessing. Thank you always for having me. I'm sorry my band, we're not together. I was actually at work, so I had to kind of run off. Of, I was working. Oh, did I, did I get you out? For, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, I mean, no, this needs to happen. We need to, we need to do this. Okay, this thank you. Exchange, a, a beautiful exchange. Thank you. Thank I'll you. see you soon, all right? Yeah, take care. Lots of love, man. Okay, talk soon, brother. Love yeah, you. love you too. Wow. Okay. That was lovely. Uh, always, yeah, always good to reconnect with, with Leon. One of these days, 
we're actually going to see one another for real. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming along. Um, next week, uh, I've, I've got a guest. Um, I think quite special guest. Not not somebody from the band. Just I know everybody wants me to get some. I will do, but it's kind of like, I don't want it to be kind of too staged or whatever. I, I you know, I just... I will get I will get the guys on, but um, no, there's somebody um, who I'm going to talk to. Hopefully, well, I'm hopefully I can say this. I'm hopefully going to talk to, depending on how it goes after the inauguration. But hopefully, I'm going to connect with Jim Jarmusch, the filmmaker. Um, we've been in a book together about pedals, guitar pedals, and he, him, and I picked out the same guitar pedal, and the publishers the book people put this book together are, are putting us together and i think jim's going to join me jim john moosh is going to join me on on live ig next week um and i didn't mention this but this is something that's really helping me at the moment we're watching quite a few jim john moosh films susan and i are having a bit of a season and we've the last four nights we've watched patterson with uh adam drivers and that we watched um, The Control of Limits, which is a, which is a kind of a thriller uh, set in Spain. And we also watched Broken Flowers. Yes, Broken Flowers, great film. Um, so I really recommend, there's something really lovely about the pace of Jim Jarmusch films. They're very, they breathe, there's a lot of space. Um, they're very beautiful. Um, there's obviously a love of poetry and slower things, the slower things of life. So, um, yeah. And also he's, he, he writes all the music for, he does a lot of the music the soundtrack. So hopefully you're going to connect with him on that. And, um, I think we might, yeah. So we're going to watch a few more this week and just remember, cause growing up, um, in the 80s, Jim Jarmusch was like the coolest director, him and Vim Vendors. Like if you were, um, if you were into sort of alternative film and music, he was the, he was one of the greats that you're kind of making these cool independent movies. So that would be good. Um, yeah, my favorite Jim Jarmusch movie at the moment, it is probably, uh, I don't know. There, I can't say. It depends. I want to watch. I think it would might have been Mystery Train, but I think um, I'm going to watch that again. It, that was. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, I'm rabbiting. All right. Big love, guys. I hope you stay well. Look after yourselves and look after one another. Thank you to Leon. Um, and yeah. I'll see you next week.